Okay, so today I'm going to try to talk a little bit about how a toilet tank works. Um, a lot of people are completely mystified as to the very simple machinations of a toilet tank. Um, you can, again, save yourself a lot of money trying to tackle some of these very simple repairs yourself, with a few exceptions when you're talking about pressurized toilet tanks or maybe like a flushometer or a tank inside the wall. Leave that to a professional. Generally speaking, a toilet that you would get and assemble in two pieces with a water control valve, a seal, and something to flush it, they operate on a very simple principle. When you approach a toilet and the tank is filled with water and it's sitting idle, the way that that toilet flushes is via gravity, okay? So a couple of things happen. You press the tank lever and a seal of some sort, which I'm gonna show you in a moment, opens up inside that tank. Water rushes from the tank into the bowl, flushes the contents of the bowl, and then the tank fills back up again endlessly, okay? So I've got my little sketch here, forgive my drawing skills, but this is a toilet at the face, okay? When you're walking in and looking at it. Here's my tank lever up here, usually facing you know your left on the top left, and then this is the bowl with water in it. Now, you'll notice this little stop right there. I put an X. On blueprints, stops and valves are, are drawn with an X because it, it cuts the water off. So, a little warning, a lot of times when these little valves have been living under your toilet for a long time and nobody's touched them for 20 years, the moment you touch them, water will start shooting from the handle. So it's always a good idea when tackling any kind of a water piping repair or repair where you're dealing with water under pressure from the street, know where the shutoff is before that. So in case this snaps off or something horrible happens, you can run downstairs to your basement and shut the main off and, and you know we, we triage the situation until a professional gets there and takes care of it. So let's not talk about that. Let's talk about this valve working just fine. So a couple of issues happen when we have problems with toilets. Most commonly running and we've got the toilet tank sweating. That's because you've got a warm environment or comparably warm environment with cold water rushing through it. So what happens is water comes up from this supply pipe into the toilet and fills this tank, okay? That ball, everyone's seen this ball, okay? it rises up on the water and simultaneously pushes down a washer sitting in the so inside of this valve head. That washer pushes down and shuts off the supply coming in. So that's how this works. When you flush the toilet and this seal comes up, I'm gonna draw that in there. There's two positions. That's the flapper, the seal, sitting in the closed position holding water in that tank. The up position, it just kinda gets snapped up like so and lets all that water rush down. Okay, then this ball drops, lifting the washer away, like so, water rushes in, fills, and the tank rises once again, and the ball pushes it down and off again. Um, so let's say we're the, the, a big service call for me, a sweaty toilet tank and that, that hissing sound. That's because one of two things, or two things is happening. This washer inside this valve head has failed in which case you need to replace this valve, okay? This is this old-fashioned one here, this is made out of brass. They're inferior, believe it or not, to the plastic jobs out there today. This is called a ball cock. Cock being a valve, okay? This being the ball that operates it. Um, these are replaced, generally speaking, today with what we call a fluid master. It's a black and gray valve. You may have seen it. They cost about $9 at the home centers, and they just quickly swap out. Um, so if this valve the washer inside this valve has failed, it's going to not stop the street pressure water coming in all the time. So it's just going to overfill. If the tank overfills, what happens? It rises, 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 and eventually goes over this overflow tube right here on the Douglas valve. This assembly is called the Douglas valve. The reason that overflow tube is there is so that if this fails, we don't fill out the tank and onto the floor endlessly and flood out the whole house, okay, so that's a safety there. Uh, the other reason that that tank would be sweating, because again, there's water constantly moving in that tank, condens condensating, okay, is if this flapper failed. If the seal failed, and there's a variety of seals, but I'm just showing you this for the sake of illustrating a point. If this seal has failed, the water is going to continuously run down into the bowl. You'll see it trickling into the bowl. You'll see the little rivulets of water in the bowl. Very common, again, so you would replace this seal. 
It can be done very simply. You don't even need to shut the water off to replace the seal, actually. It'll just keep rushing into the bowl. So you kind of pop it off. There's two little ears right here on the side of the Douglas valve. And that, that uh, rubber seal just kind of snaps on, put the new one on, and you attach the chain to the tank lever. When you call a plumber into your home, uh, you want them to change all of it in one shot, okay? Don't let contractors nickel and dime or try to take the easy way out. Chances are, if the flapper has failed, so has this. And conversely, if the valve has failed, so is the flapper. Make sure everything's right. We know we want no jiggly handles. Jiggly handles are a no-no in the, in the trade, okay? If things look rusty, replace them. Um, one problem, a lot of times when people think that they're gonna get off the hook easily with a basic toilet repair, is that I go there and because of the age of the toilet, let's say 20 years, there's two bolts inside the tank. If you were to look down into the tank from a bird's eye view, there are two brass bolts sitting roughly here and here, down at the bottom of the toilet tank. Those bolts, very simple, they're just long brass bolts with a rubber washer underneath them. When the toilet's originally installed, they go down through the bowl and then you attach nuts from below and it connects the tank rigidly to the toilet bowl. What you'll see a lot, or what I see a lot, is I'll put my hand on the tank and the tank wobbles back and forth. Now you need a new toilet because it's not worth the labor and work to cut these out because most toilets are, you can get a decent toilet for like $150. Most bolt jobs like that, they're a pain. You have to get a power saw and cut it off. Now if the toilet's a $2,000 toilet, sure we'll do it and we'll rebuild it, but very, very rarely will I do that. So be aware of that. You can also tell by reaching down into the tank and touching the rubber with your finger. If a black patina comes off on your finger, that's the rubber wearing out. It's nothing gross inside here. This is all actually clean water. It's, this, it's the bowl that you don't want to be putting your hands in, not without gloves anyways. So kind of do an evaluation of your toilet before you put any money into fixing it with a plumber. Sometimes, most of the time, it's better to just replace the toilet outright, especially if it's been in there for 15 or 20 years. If you're going to tackle doing this job yourself, and it's a very simple job to do, remember we're gonna shut that valve off. Your most common culprits to get your toilet back up and running without reinventing the wheel here on it is the water control valve, which will be about between nine and $12, the flapper or the seal, which could be upwards of 20, 25, and then the tank lever, okay? The tank lever is just a few dollars for the cheap ones. You can get up into the 30, 40, 50 dollar range if you're getting a chrome lever. Um, but generally speaking, if you're handy and you're not intimidated by this stuff, you can fix your toilet for about 50 bucks.